Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye, do, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. But whoso hath these words good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion, from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Father, once again, we ask your wisdom, guidance tonight. We pray, Lord, that you will cause us to understand the message and help us, Lord, apply it in our lives. Holy Spirit, continue to guide us and lead us that we may be able, O oh God, to glorify the name of the Father in our daily lives, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will use me to be a blessing to your people tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so we're not going to uh, study all the uh, verses that we have read. We're going to skip some of them. And we will only focus on the uh, topic of loving the family. Loving the family or loving our brethren in the Lord. Or we can also say that loving the church. So unity is a very crucial in the success of Christianity and of course the success of the church. And unity is always expressed in our love for one another. Because if there is no love for one another, unity will always be absent. There will be hypocritical unity but never a genuine unity so in first john chapter 3 verses 11 to 18 we are being reminded by the apostle john that we need to love one another and the love that we must give towards one another must be real love the love that comes from the lord the kind of love that was shed abroad by the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Because only the kind of love that God can uh, give is the kind of love that will unite each and every one of us. Uh, th there was this uh, story in a church where a woman was surprised because the person who doesn't like her one Sunday just hug her uh, and then afterwards uh, left her and went to his place so she was a very surprised why that thing happened because she knew that that person doesn't really like her but then at the end of the uh, message uh, because uh, apparently she was absent the, uh, the Sunday before that the pastor said that your assignment will be the same thing to hug the person that you do not like in our church. So that uh, is the reason why she was hugged by that member. But then again, if loving one another is just simply hugging one another, then that's going to be easy. If it is simply showing in a uh, short or a few seconds of action, then we can say that we love one another. But love is not just like that. It is not just uh, an external action, but it must always have that internal desire to love. It is not only what we see, but it is also what is deep within us. So that any outward action that we will show is the result of the inward love that we have in our hearts. Because it is very easy to smile at the person that you hate. It is very easy to talk to a person that you disdain. It is easy to show uh, some outward appearance of affection 
even though your heart and your mind is far from it. So, you see, as a Christian, love requires continual effort and hard work. Because at the heart of loving others means putting others ahead of you. And that is always a huge battle. Why? Because our default is to love ourselves more than other people. It is very, very seldom that you will find a person who will love other people more than himself. But that is love. And that is what God is commanding us to do. And that is what the Apostle John is reminding us also to do in order for us to prove that we are really the children of God. You see, John was originally known as the son of thunder. Meaning to say he's not a gentle person. Meaning to say he's a person that when he goes to a place, he will steer a storm. Because he's the son of thunder. He may have an attitude of uh, troublesome. Or attitude that people will not like. That whenever he leaves the place, they will be thankful that he's not there anymore. But then one day, he was touched by the master. He repented of his sin, and he got saved, and he was transformed into the apostle of love. There was a complete change in his life. That whenever he is present, there is always calm. There is always uh, what we call love. There is always something that will uh, make people at ease whenever he is around, provided that you are not a person who dislike the gospel, because his love will always see to it that he will share the word of God to those people that are in need. If you're going to read the uh, accounts regarding the early churches by Jerome and Tertullian and all the early church fathers, you will Read them giving a testimony that the early church really showed love for one another. That they were known because of, the, of their love towards one another. They are known for willingly giving up their lives for their brothers and sisters in the Lord. They will suffer persecution. They will uh, suffer hardship as long as they can do something for the benefit of the people that they love. And that is God and their fellow Christian. So that is why we can see the importance of this command given to us by God. Because as I have said, it is the commandment of the Lord. And if it is only going to be done, if we will only obey this command of the Lord, then I believe it should be enough that we are going to have a lasting unity in our church. If we will only love one another, if we will only put the uh, a benefit of one another above our own benefit and above our own desire, this commandment of God should be enough in order for IBCSR or for any church for that matter to have a genuine unity and they will be able to glorify the name of God. In this a letter, five times, this uh, particular command was emphasized. Uh, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. Can we look at these verses, please? For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So since the beginning, this is a message given by God. Message given by the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 23. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. So not only that we believe, but if we believe, then we are going to love. And that is the commandment that was given to us by God. Chapter 4, verse number 7. 
Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Look at that, that uh, phrase. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So if you do not love, then you do not know God. And if you do not love, then you are not born of God. Then verses 11 and 12. The Bible says here, Beloved, if God so loved us, for God so loved the word, amen? amen? Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. You see the emphasis? Nobody has seen God. But if we will love one another, then they will see God in us. They will see God in how we love one another as a family of God, as a local church, as brethren in the Lord, and as a family joined together by the Lord. And then look at First uh, John chapter 4 and verse number 8. It says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. You see, this is the uh, emphasis that was given in case we did not understand what was already said or mentioned by the Apostle John. So love is, somehow we may say, a very overused word. Because even though we do not really mean to love, we use the word love. Like, for example, I, I, I love my dog, my cat. I love my, uh, you know, my family. I love my job. I love my church. I love God. But then if you're going to look at how we treat these people and how we treat these things, will not manifest love that is according to the word of God. So love is a very misunderstood word. There is one woman who wrote, and the letter goes like this. Dearest Deo, no words can express the great unhappiness I've felt since breaking our engagement. Please say that you will take me back. No one could take your place in my heart. So please, please forgive me. Deo, I love you. I love you. Yours forever, Lani. P.S. And Deo, congratulations for winning the sweepstakes. So, Lani thought that they are winning the sweepstake is love. If not for the sweepstake, there will be no letter like this. And we think that we love people that we can get benefit from them. And we think that we love people if they are giving us the things that we need. And we think that we love people because they make us feel good. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not biblical love. Biblical love is sacrificing yourself for the benefit of the object of your love. Amen? You see, people thought that love is uh, like a sentimental feeling or a shallow emotion. Love is much, much more deeper than that. So let us first look, number one, at the meaning of biblical love. What is a biblical love? You see, biblical love is a self-sacrificing, caring commitment that shows itself in seeking the highest good of the one loved. So if you say that you love, then you will seek the highest good of the person that you love. Or the thing that you love. Or God 
that we love. You are not going to put your your ambition, your your desire, your happiness above the person that you love because love is self sacrificing not putting yourself first but you are willing to be last in order for the person that you love to take priority in your life that is the meaning of biblical love and we can see that in the action of the Lord Jesus Christ that when he was hanging on the cross of Calvary it is because he put our benefit he put our uh, uh, our desire or our uh, what we call a salvation first and not thinking about his life he willingly laid down his life for our salvation and for our benefit that is love because if you're going to analyze it most of the time our love is a selfish kind of love I will love you if you will love me or love me then I will love you if you don't love me then I am not going to love you that is not love at all it is never love because love is self sacrificing it is loving even though not being loved in return that is love you see when the Lord Jesus Christ so loved the world when God so loved the world that he gave his only son the word to whom he gave his son shouted that the son be crucified that that a, a criminal a thief was even chosen above his son whom he sent to this world to die for our sin God the Father was not loved in return Jesus was not loved in return but in spite of that he went all the way to Calvary why because he loved he loves he loved us so that is love so don't say that you love a person if you will only love him or her if she will love you in return. A loving person will keep on loving even if the person that he or she loves will not love him or her back. That is the biblical kind of love. At its heart, biblical love is a commitment that is not without feeling. Yes, of course, there is feeling because it is, ca it is a caring commitment. It involves delight in the, person, in the person that you love. It is not just a duty, but it is a desire that manifests itself in action towards the person that you love. So when you love, it is abstract, but you concretize that love by your action towards the person that you love. So there is that feeling inside, and there is that manifestation of, of action outside that is showing the person that you really love that person. Those deeds often require self-sacrifice. As I have said, it was seen in the Lord Jesus Christ supremely on his death on the cross of Calvary. So the, the goal of this commitment is the highest good of the one you loved. While there are many good things that love seeks to accomplish, like for example, to provide for the food, provide for education of the children, to provide a shelter for the family, to provide so many things that the person that you love may need but the highest expression of this love is number one to see to it that that person will be saved by the grace of god and if that person is saved number two that person will grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ that is the commitment the supreme commitment of love or a love that is committed for 
the Lord. That is putting personal worth and value for the person that you love. So that's why we use this word love many, many times, but we really do not understand the meaning of it. Lust is replaced by the word love. Like is replaced by the word love. Whatever affection we may feel, we use the word love in order to express that affection. But when that affection comes to a test or is tested, then we will see that we do not really love because love will never cease. It will never leave no matter how hard the situation may be. And love will never hurt the person that you love. So, Christian love fulfills the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 11. Look at verse 11. The Bible says that in 1 John 3, 11. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So when we love one another, we fulfill the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this command is not a command that emanates from John. It is a command given by the Lord Jesus Christ, given by God from the very beginning. Look at uh, John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. So this is not a command from the Apostle John. This is a command given by the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Apostle John keeps on emphasizing to those people that he uh, meets and to those people that will read his epistles or the gospel because that is the heart of the Apostle John. If you're going to read uh, one uh, testimony of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Tertullian or... Uh, I, I, I forgot the name, but, but they said that when John was very, very old, they will just carry him from one church to another, and they have to accompany him and hold him up while he's behind the pulpit and preaching. And they say that every time that he preached, he will always say, my little children love one another. He will repeat that so many times during his preaching, that he was asked one time and said, why do you always repeat that phrase, love one another? He said, because it is the greatest commandment given to us towards each other by God to love one another. So he said, as long as I live, I'm going to tell people love one another and that it, uh, and until he died that is the message that he is always preaching you see jesus instructed his followers here to love one another it is the basic and fundamental thing that a believer's walk with christ should have because look at what he said by this shall all men know it's not about the preaching it's not about the good deeds. It's not just about that. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, by this, by what? 34, loving one another. All men know that ye are, shall know that ye are my disciples if ye have loved one to another. Because that is the supreme test. If you love God, then that is the supreme test. And the greatest commandment towards God. And if we love one another, that is the supreme test of our faith to God. That is loving one another. You see, Jesus 
In verse 35, notice, Jesus gave permission to the world, not the believers, but to the unbelievers to judge us. You see, by this shall all men, the unbelievers, those that are looking in, those that are observing us, he says, by this shall all men don't know that ye are my disciples if ye have loved one towards another. So meaning to say, the world will know that we are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ simply on the basis of us loving one another. Kaya kapag ka may kapatid na hindi mahal yung kapatid niya, eh ang pinapakita natin sa mundo, hindi tayo mga manan ng palataya. We are showing the word that we are not saved. That we are not in the Lord. We are showing the word that we are not the children of God. If we do not love one another. You see? You see, believers today are not actually fulfilling this command. If the world will judge us on the basis of how we treat one another, are we going to pass the test? Are they going to say, yes, these people are really disciples or followers of the Lord Jesus Christ because of the love that we can see in them towards one another? another. Don't you think that God's heart is breaking whenever we do not love one another? Whenever we do not treat one another with kindness? You see, God's heart, heart is being broken. The absence of love in the life of a believer is inconsistent with the message of love that the Lord Jesus Christ has commanded. Christian love is foundational to being a child of God. If there is no love, you cannot even claim that you are a child of God. You know why? Actually, love proves or provides an assurance of our salvation. Look at that chapter, 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. This is very clear. First John 3, 14 to 15. First John, first John. We know that we have passed from death unto life. What the John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, He that, uh, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And then look at what John says. We know that we have passed from death unto life. Meaning to say we are saved because we love the brethren. So it is, it provides an assurance of salvation. I, you can say, I know I am saved because I love the brethren. I know I am saved because I love the church, the membership of the church. I know I'm saved because I love my brothers and my sisters in Christ. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. If you do not love your brothers and sisters in the Lord, you are uh, dead in trespasses and sins. Meaning to say we are not saved if we do not love the brethren. We are not saved. If we do not love one another, look at verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So you see? But, Pastor, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. Because the Bible is very clear that one of the evidences that one is a believer is their love for the church and for the family of God. Okay, let me be clear. Becoming a Christian is not earned by loving one another. Rather, loving one another is a proof that we are a Christian. 
So when you're a Christian, you will prove that by loving one another. So love for one another is therefore an avenue of the assurance of our salvation. It is not the means of obtaining salvation. So if you question your salvation, you check your love. Do I love the brethren? Do I love the church? And if you doubt it, then you doubt your salvation. If you don't, then you have no salvation. But if you do, then you have an assurance of salvation. So how do I know that I love? Or how do I know what this love is? Well, very easy. It is illustrated by the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Wow. Parang hirap, no? But this is how love is shown. That we lay down our lives for the brethren because the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. But pastor, there are just really some people that is very hard to love. Yes, like you and me. We are hard to love. Because we're sinners. All of us are sinners. All of us are, we went from our own ways. All of us do not want to retain God in our minds. All of us were once dead in trespasses and sins. All of us were enemies of God at one time. And the Bible says that we were such an one. Who committed sin after sin after sin before God. And even when we do good works, it is like a filthy rag. So we are hard to love. So what did the Lord Jesus Christ? He loved us anyway. So what if there is a, a member in the church that is hard to love? Then love them anyway. We cannot do anything but love. Ang gawin natin? Hey, Pasaway ho eh. Ang gagawin natin? Kamuhian natin? We will hate because their attitude is not good. So we're just going to hate that person. We're just going to ignore that person. Or the Lord Jesus Christ says, if you are really my disciple, then you love one another. But that person does not love me. It doesn't matter. What's important is that you fulfill the command of Christ. And if they will not, it's their problem. But in your part, you have fulfilled the command of the Lord Jesus Christ that you love. And it is better to love than not to love at all. It is better that you love and not be loved. So at least you know what love is. Because you know it, you felt it, you applied it. You loved. And if that person does not love you back, then you are more blessed than that person. Because at least you know, you felt, and you applied love in your life towards that particular person. So that is why love is sacrifice. That is why the ultimate expression or manifestation of sacrificial love is when the Lord Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross of Calvary. If you want a portrait of love, then look at the Lord Jesus Christ and you will see a perfect picture of love. And we will see how short we fall from that kind of love that it should make us repent and beg God to help us and give us more grace so that we will be able to love. You see, in our experience, we, we are a recipient of too much hate. We are a recipient of 
defamation. That the very people that we love and help betrayed us. So what are we going to do? Are we going to hate them? And that's the tendency. And if we're going to take an honest survey, maybe more than 90% of the church really felt hate towards these people. But then the command is love. One another. How can you love mm, my? How can you love mm, my? How can you love mm, 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 my, 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 my? We may say it's impossible, but it's not. But they are our enemies. Yeah, that's why the Lord Jesus Christ says, love your enemies. What excuse do we have not to love? So, pastor, you're, going, you, you, you're just going to stop everything that you're doing? No. So, I thought we have to love. Yes. Don't you know that spanking is love? Don't you know that disciplining is love? Don't you know that allowing the person to suffer the consequences of their sin so that they will repent and they will realize that they are wrong is love. So we do not hate them, but we want them to realize what they have done and they should repent and go back to the path that God wants them to try. Why? Because whether we like it or not, God has a purpose in their lives. And we ought to be a part of that still. That's why what we're doing is not hate. It is love. Because they have done this in the past. They got away with it. And they are continually doing it. So stopping them to do that is love. You see, love hates sin. Is Jesus Christ love? Amen? Do you believe that? What did he do to the money changer and the collectors in the house of God? He used whip and throw all of their merchandise out. Why? Because he loves them and he doesn't want them to continue desecrating the house of God. And that is love. When you spank your children, does it mean you hate them? No. You love them because you do not want them to continue in that path that will lead them to perdition. You want to stop them in their track so that you can guide them back to the right way of living a life that is pleasing unto the Lord. So therefore, Christian love is expressed by action in a personal way and in a practical way. Look at, let us look at the two uh, verses 17 and 18. It says, But who so hath this words good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him? How dwelleth the love of God in him? So it is personal. You show your love to your brother or your sister who is in need and you have the means to help them. You do not hoard that in order for your benefit and not to provide for their need. No. We should use that uh, situation in order to show them that we love them in order to show them that we are willing to sacrifice in order to make them realize that the love of God is, is in our hearts. You see, can we go back to verse 16? Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So, uh, plural, right? For the brethren, plural. And then all of a sudden, in verse number 17, it became singular. But who so hot 
this word's good and said his brother have need and shut up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? You see, as human beings, we have this tendency. It is as if it is easier for us to show magnanimous work than individual acts of love. It is as if it is easy for us to love the world than to love the people here in Shimrip. That we are willing to send money to the missionaries in many different parts of the world. And yet we do not win the people of Shimrip, those that are near us. It is as if it is very easy to love the church as a whole than to love that person sitting beside you or many cares from you. Is I love the church, but there is one, two, or three that you do not love. It's quite easy to do that. So that is why he said that we love, we need to love the brethren. And then in verse 17 he says, if a brother, you see a brother or a sister have a need and you have the means, then do not allow your bowels of compassion to close to that person. But you help that person. You see? Parabang uh, mahal ko po ang church. Eh, ba't si kapatid? Eh, hira po kasi ang taong yan eh. Kakainis po yan. Paano mong mahal ang church? Eh, part ng church yun. Oh. Di ba? So, sinong sinong niluloko mo? So, you are trying to appease yourself by making yourself believe that you love the church, but there is a component of that church that you do not love. For God, it is the same thing as not loving at all. Because when you love a whole, you must also love the components of that whole. When Jesus loved the world, he loved each and every person. But when we say we love the world, sometimes we do not love a certain portion of that world. Like for example, people in America may say that they love the world, that they send their missionaries all over the world, and then you mention to them Osama Bin Laden. Oh, and that's a child of the That is a manifestation of Satan. So how can you say that you love the world when Osama Bin Laden is part of the world? You see what I'm saying? This is what John is emphasizing. You do not cover your love by magnanimous action, but you must show your love by even small acts of uh, love or affection towards even the most insignificant member of the church. You see what the Apostle Paul says? Those that are weak, part of our body, are the ones that we take care. Why? Because they're weak. And we give much more attention to them than those that are strong. But, but our love is different. We love those that are lovable, and we tend to hate or ignore those that are unlovable or that are hard to love but then love is personal it must be from you to all and from you to each and everyone so it is a, a practical kind of love and a personal kind of love that's why when you love you are not going to allow ill will or a hate to linger in your heart. You see, sometimes there are jokes that are going around that, oh, if you're my husband, I am going to uh, put uh, poison on your drink. And, oh, if you're my wife, I'm going to drink it. 
sometimes we hurt the feeling of one another by the things that we are saying towards one another. So we, we, we let us try to let us try to avoid doing these things if we really love one another. You see, this this church as a whole loved one another. Loved everybody. It was shown during this pandemic. We have the money, we use it for the benefit of all. Why? Because what are we going to do with the money if a brethren is having a hard time? Or if we're not going to get through this problem that we are facing or that we have faced before. Up to the point that our finances were depleted. It doesn't matter. What's important is that we were supplied during time of need and that is the action. An action of love by the church. And now, you are working. Why don't you show your love to the church? by contributing one more once more one more time to the needs of the church by giving your free will tithes and your offering and your faith promise and your sacrificial giving why not do it knowing that no matter what what happened my church will not leave me nor forsake me this is what I'm always saying, even when I was in the Philippines, you are the one who is actually benefiting from what you are giving to the church. Because you will be the one to use it for the glory of God. You benefit when you give. That's why it is very uh, disconcerting to know or even to see that people will put themselves first before others and then pretend that there is love in our hearts. Even in the family. Parents and children should not hurt one another. They should love one another. They must put the, uh, but I, I, I cannot really remember the term since the beginning of the message. They must put the, uh, another term for benefit. Mm. Yeah, the welfare of others before their own welfare. So we need to say, as a father, I should put the interests of my children in front of my interests. And as children, they must put the interests of their parents before their own interests. Because that is love. Our problem is this. We want people to love us. That is our main problem. No, no, I, I want to be loved. That's what I need. You must love me. Love me. Love me. Love me. Love me. No. That should not be our desire. Our desire is, I will love you. I will love you. I will love you. I will love you. I don't care if you do not love me. But I will love you. Why? Because that is commanded to me by God. Now, you want to obey God? Then you love. So if I obey God, I will love you. And you want to obey God, you will love me. Then we love one another. Then we know that we are the disciples. That we are the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes... If parents cannot love their children and children cannot love their parents, how can they love other people? That's what I'm trying to say. 
You love other people, you don't love your family, you hypocrite. How can you love others more than your very own? Hmm. Diba? Doon tayo. Doon tayo. Eh. Kaya hindi ba sa pamilya natin merong eh, nung boy pa nga ang tito ko laging sinasabing magaling ka sa barkada. Pero pagdating sa pamilya mo wala kang kwenta. Ah, hindi ba? Kagastos para sa barkada. Pero sa pamilya hindi. Oh. How, how can you say that you love? No, you don't. You love yourself because you want to be loved by them and you're trying to buy their love but your very own knows who you really are. That's why there is no such thing as love in our hearts. Oh. Diba? That's why do you want to know that you really love? Then love the nearest person to you first. And do not demand them to love you back. Don't. You are the one commanded to love. They're also commanded, Pastor. Yes, but the command is personal. It's for you. That you love. And they're commanded to love. Question. If they did not obey the command to love, are you also going to disobey because they disobeyed? You ask yourself that question. No, Pastor, the reason why I do not love him is because he doesn't love me. So you both disobeyed God. So what if you love him and he did not love you when you are facing the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ? What will be your work? Gold and silver and precious stone. Is that going to be your work? Or wood, hay, and stubble. But Lord, what can I do? They don't love me. Did I command you to love them because they love you? No. My command to you is to love one another. You do your job, let them do their job. But most often than not, if you will love a sacrificial kind of love, the people of God will love you back. Because they will see the love of God in you. And you are going to be very, very easy to love. That is why, please, let us stop kidding ourselves. If we cannot love you, your, you, your own person, if you cannot love. If you will not love, then how can you say that you are a child of God? How can people say that we are the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? Love your children, even if they will not love you back. Love your parents, even if they will not love you back. Love your husband, even if he will not love you back. Love your wife, even if she will not love you back. That's your job, that's your duty, that's your responsibility. That is what was commanded of you. Do it! And then pray that the Lord will convict the heart of the person so that he or she will also obey the commands of God. And I would like to close here that if we will just focus on the command given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ and do it, then we are going to avoid so many heartaches and disappointments in life. Because when you love, you are already fulfilled even if the other person will not love you back and if they will love you back then that is just a bonus to what was uh, given to us by God so we stand up please father we thank you for the message that we have heard